This is Sarah Wilkinson from Humber College and the University of Guelph Humber. In this second video in the skeletal muscle series, I'm going to be covering the neuromuscular junction. I would encourage you to watch the video on muscle features before watching this video and consider reviewing the nervous system videos from previous series. That would include the resting membrane potential video, action potentials, and synapse. So as a review, just like a neuron, muscle cells have a negative resting membrane potential. What this means, if I simplify this diagram by outlining the plasma membrane, that inside skeletal muscle, there is a negative voltage, and outside the membrane, there is a positive voltage. This comes from the separation of charged particles. That is, outside the cell, there's a higher concentration of sodium ions, while inside, there's large negatively charged protein anions. If we continue in our review, the plasma membrane of skeletal muscle cells is called the sarcolemma. Projections into the cell are called transverse tubules, or shortened T-tubules, and action potentials travel down the plasma membrane into these T-tubules. Surrounding each myofibril is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum containing calcium, which we call the sarcoplasmic reticulum. As a further review, action potentials travel down motor neurons to skeletal muscles. We will go over today how the motor neuron communicates with the muscle cell. Essentially, after the message has been passed, an action potential will then continue down into the skeletal muscle. So let's have a look at how a motor neuron communicates with skeletal muscle tissue. We're going to do this by blowing up the neuromuscular junction. That is the connection between the motor neuron and skeletal muscle fiber. So to orient you to my diagram, here we have the presynaptic neuron and its axon terminal containing vesicles of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. The space between the presynaptic neuron and the skeletal muscle tissue is called the synaptic cleft. So here we have the plasma membrane of our muscle fiber. This plasma membrane will continue into the T-tubule, which is surrounded by your sarcoplasmic reticulum containing calcium. Let's start up here as the action potential arrives at its axon terminal. If you recall from previous videos, within the axon terminal are voltage-gated calcium channels so that as an action potential arrives at its axon terminal, that is sodium moves down its electrochemical gradient, this is going to trigger voltage-gated calcium channels to open up. When this occurs, calcium is going to move into the neuron down its concentration gradient. This movement of calcium into the neuron is going to stimulate synaptic vesicles containing acetylcholine to move to the plasma membrane. At the plasma membrane, acetylcholine will be released into the synaptic cleft, where it can then bind to receptors on the postsynaptic membrane. These receptors are attached to sodium channels. These chemically gated sodium channels are going to open up and allow sodium to move into the muscle fiber, causing a wave of depolarization. This wave of depolarization will spread down the plasma membrane, and I'm going to depict this with a star. So here we can see your action potential sweeps across the entire surface of the muscle cell. In addition, it's going to sweep down each T-tubule. As the action potential sweeps down each T-tubule, this is going to cause the release of calcium ions from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And calcium release into the sarcoplasm 
is going to trigger muscle contraction. The next video will be on this where you see how release of calcium into the sarcoplasm is going to initiate muscle contraction. However, before you move on, let's review the steps in how a motor neuron communicates with a muscle cell at the neuromuscular junction. So let's start at the presynaptic neuron. An action potential arrives at the axon terminal where it causes voltage-gated calcium channels to open up. Calcium then moves into the neuron where it stimulates synaptic vesicles containing the neurotransmitter acetylcholine to move to the plasma membrane. Acetylcholine is released into the synaptic cleft where it can then bind at the postsynaptic membrane to its receptors. This will cause chemically gated sodium channels to open up. This wave of depolarization, i.e. the action potential, will sweep across the entire membrane surface of the muscle cell and down into each T tubule. This will cause a release of calcium ions from the sarcoplasmic reticulum into the sarcoplasm surrounding the myofilaments. In the next video, we'll take this up as we cover the slotting filament theory of muscle contraction.